Okay, so a friend of mine caught me on Facebook the other night and was wondering how I could make a bottle stopper without the fancy collet chucks and uh, Jacob's chucks and spindle chucks and whatnot. Um, so I was saying you could probably do it between centers, so this is the poor man's deal. Um, so what I often do is I'll buy, um, instead of buying the kits, I go to the thrift stores and there was there was this bottle stopper, it's a cheap one, just heated up so the glue popped off. And now I've got one, it's not like a lot of the special made ones for turning because um, it doesn't have a screw that goes on. So we just turn a little tenon and then it fits right on and you end up with a bottle stopper like that. So and this is, was another type where the plastic jewel had a tenon on it that went down into the, the stopper and then you can also buy these little replacement corks are usually for like a, a, a pour spout um, but they work just fine we just turn a little tenon that fits in there a lot of guys will buy dowels and then drill a hole in their blank that's fine too but you know this is for the guy that doesn't have a lot of tools in his shop So what we'll do is this is just some Russian olive I had. It was the corner off of um, a platter blank I had. I had a great big wide, probably like 18 inches across a log. And so what we'll do is we'll just kind of find us a center here. This is a cheap way without, and so our center is right in here. A lot of the old style shop teachers used to teach this method. All right, so there we are. We'll put that on the dry spur. And I'll bring this up a little bit. I'll just have a cup center. Tighten that up. Tail sucks. So I'm going to try to do this without a lot of special tools or anything. I will use my spindle roughing gouge. Now because it's a roughing gouge doesn't mean we use it on anything. We only use it on spindles. Okay, so this is my spindle roughing gouge. You can see I didn't use it on a bowl blank, but this is what happens when you get a catch. The tenons are so weak that um, it broke, so I salvaged it with a pipe. I actually kind of like it because it's got an extra heavy handle, but it is cold in the winter. So I'm going to run this around 2800 RPM, so it's spinning very fast, but that will make short work of everything. We'll hurry up and... any bouncing so we're around. So that's got our blank nice and round. We got a little flat spot there but we're going to end up losing that really easy. So what I want to do is take some calipers and just pick these up from Harbor Freight real cheap. We want to measure the inside diameter so we'll lock this down that's going to be our um, that's going to be the thickness of the spindle now this tapers a little bit so we'll try to account for that so now let's just kind of rough in our shape a little bit we'll do that with just a little roughing gouge or a little spindle gouge here Spindle turning, we always run downhill with the gouge. We don't try to go back uphill. Rubbing the bevel. And bring it up. So what we do, I think, 
It's going to be a nice handle length. What we'll do is we'll come in here with the parting tool. down a little bit so you just put a little bevel to it that'll be good enough for a tenon now what we want to do is get this outside all right so what I'm going to do is, now we don't let both points touch just one mark about where we need to stop I'll check it in a bit. Now you're only limited by, on shape, by what your imagination is and the quality of the wood so we'll take that down just a tiny bit more so it matches up with the top of that stopper and a really light cut so we don't have to sand much I'm thinking I'm going to do a bit of a cove right here we always go downhill from the outside to the end So I think that looks like that's going to make a nice one. We'll take this down just a little bit. You can maybe see a little wave right there from chatter. And we'll get rid of that. We'll take this down so we don't have much of a nib. Uh, we're done really turning. We don't need quite as much. We just need something to steady it with. Right? So now for sanding. Um, I'm lazy, so I'm not going to turn the lathe off and, or, and slow it down. I'll just go ahead. At this speed, it pretty much burnishes, but I don't mind because it puts a nice shine on the wood. If you can get the wood shiny, then your finish is shiny too. I'm getting a little burn, I need to... because I let it sit on there in one place and get too hot. So we'll smooth that over. There is one problem about going so fast is you can, you can burn the wood. So we'll stop it and take a look, see if we got all the tool marks out. We'll, we'll take that burn out with the next grit. The start there was uh, 220. A little 320 here. Bend the paper a little bit so it fits in the fold nice. We'll keep this moving so it doesn't burn. Get that burn out. So stop it, take a look. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, I'll hit it with a little 800. Now 
worry too much about wasting this wood because this was left over from making a platter. So, and we're done with the turning part. Now for finish, I'll make this one a little darker. I have some garnet shellac in a squeeze bottle. I've got just a little bit of linseed oil with it to help it polish up. And uh, on small stuff like this, um, I think it works good. And um, the friction will help polish it as well. The oil helps the polish effect. It doesn't work so good on big stuff because you tend to get build up and the, the finish will dry a little bit too, too soon before you come around gets a chance to polish but high RPM like this um, is one of my favorite ways to finish the little guys just kind of build it up a little bit It's a little warm, but that'll evaporate all the alcohol out of the shellac. And I think that looks pretty. So one final thing I like to do. I have a little sway here and some Canalba car polish. A little friction work that on. So that's pretty much, now we just part this guy off. For little stuff, I have this old cheap kitchen knife that I turned into a parting tool. Okay, so that came off. Now what we need to do is sand the top. So there's our bottle stopper, real quick. We just need to sand this off, polish it back up, and there you go.